Hello, it is Sunday, December 19th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Sunday puzzle today, and actually I just realized as I was saying that, it is the last Sunday puzzle before Christmas Day, and so as a themed puzzle, and in fact the title of the puzzle, Season to Taste, probably hints to the theme, there will be something going on. And if we look here through the gauzy privacy veil, I can see what looks like maybe a tree, a Christmas tree, and a bell perhaps, and a gingerbread cookie, presumably, and then I can't really see what that is. Anyway, we'll have to, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this now. We'll see this all much more clearly in a few moments. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for joining me for today's uh, solve, and particular thanks to Austi Pelisser, Laura Sexton, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, benefactors over at the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And thank you so much to all three of them, as well as everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. If you'd like to join their ranks, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve, where not only that benefit is available, but for anyone at any level, all of the bonus solves from the several months so far of doing the Patreon, as well as the new ones that go up on a weekly basis, such as most recently, the latest mini puzzle speed solve, weekly speed solve, and the puzzles from the Discord uh, chat server, uh, Constructor's Corner channel. So crosswords constructed by viewers of this very series. I really enjoyed that one, and I'm definitely going to do more. I've seen there are already two or three more crosswords posted in the Daily Solve chat uh, server, Discord server, since I did that video. So we're stocking up. Maybe I'll, maybe every five or so I'll do it, although it might depend on how many are minis and how many are full-sized. Okay. Anyway, you can join that chat server as well in the link in the description field underneath the video, where you can also find the Patreon link. And that Patreon gives you an extra channel in that, um, in that, uh, Discord. Anyway, all right, let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. There were several, actually, I think. So Kathy Swope uh, explains that beers refers to movable frames or stands that a coffin rests on, from the German bar, B-A-H-R-E, to bear. And beer is spelled B-I-E-R. And that was a word with which I was unfamiliar, at least I was unfamiliar with it in that particular context. Uh, Kathy says, much easier for me when words have Latin roots. And she also explains that a steer, S-T-E-R-E, is a measure of volume equal to a cubic meter. So there we go. Um, <laughs> so I referenced a, a classic linguistic um, curiosity yesterday, which is a sentence that consists solely of the word buffalo. And Brian D. has transcribed it and explained it here. The full sentence is, Buffalo, 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 buffalo. And essentially that means bison from Buffalo, New York, are harassed by bison from Buffalo, New York, harassing buffalo from Buffalo, New York. So it's sort of a silly sentence in that it's incredibly redundant, but that's basically what it means. And Brian says it works because it's an adjective from the town of Buffalo. In other words, buffalo, 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 bison a collective noun referring to the animal generally, and a verb meaning to bother. Okay, uh, Duke Garland says, as a person from the cultural background in question, I was very surprised to see the definition of blini, which referred to uh, something topped with caviar. Uh, this person says, it's not that common to eat them with caviar. Weird. But I would agree it was a historically common way to eat black caviar, sturgeon roe, hundreds of years ago. And that was surprising to me because I thought I have, I'm pretty sure I've eaten um, caviar on blini. So maybe it's a, um, maybe it's the sort of thing that is not actually done very much anymore by actual local people, but main, is, is maintained in some kind of, I don't know, tourist sort of setting. Okay. Craig Getting explains, regarding the eight track clue for train sets, I bet it's a reference to model train tracks laid out in a figure eight shape. That is probably the case. That didn't occur to me at all. I was trying to think a number of tracks equal to eight, but no, it probably is a figure eight, which is a pretty classic train track shape. And Craig also said, I'd never heard of suite of furniture before. My guess around suite being several pieces was that pieces of music in a suite. And I, 
a, a few people said that, and I think that's an equally appropriate answer. I think you could have you could have a suite of furniture, a suite of music, a suite of other things as well, a bathroom suite, as someone pointed out. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? I guess most of these aren't corrections. Most of these are simply um, uh, observations and comments. And ADYJ1411 had the same observation about suite, although saying, even though a suite is one musical work, each of the bits in it could be played as a separate musical piece, which is true. And <laughs> here's, to cap this off, Spiral in Your Eyes says, I really enjoyed how the answer, okay, Boomer, was itself a fitting response to your comment on its clue that the cultural references are getting too recent for you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I have nothing to say. I've been, I've been seen, as they say, speaking of current cultural references. All right. Um, so that is, I suppose, that. Let's get on to the puzzle itself. This is a Sunday puzzle entitled Season to Taste. It's been constructed by Laura Taylor Kinnell, who seems to have constructed a few other crosswords for the New York Times, maybe half a dozen or so, and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. As I said, as a Sunday puzzle, we will have a theme, and it's this big grid, so it's a theme, and it will probably take us a while. And the theme mails something to do with season or taste or seasoning to taste, cooking perhaps, or just the season more generally. Let's see. So what was this? What is this thing? Is it a Santa hat? I can't tell what this icon is. We also have a star and an angel and a candy cane. Well, presumably that's a candy cane and a heart. But what is that? I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it becomes clear. All right. They may be, they might be put on. One might put on airs. I mean, it feels as though you could put on other things, but I'm just going to try this and see if it works. Court Sport Group. Could be, I don't know, American Basketball Association. Is that something? Drive blank. Yeah, probably not. Could this be drive through spelled in this sort of commercial way? T-H-R-U. Becoming faint doesn't really look like it. Course preparers, I don't think so. What is this? Solarium activity. Um, sunning, maybe? You'd sun yourself in the solarium? And then actually that does make drive-through fit. Interesting. So maybe errors is not what might be put on in this case. Course preparers. Could be chefs. They could prepare a course of food, a meal. They might be put on. You could put on an act. There we go. That's actually sort of similar to putting on airs in a way. Court sport group, AT blank. I don't know. I assume the A is American or association, but I don't know what. Or athletic, maybe. I don't know. Little, oh, here's, must be a theme clue. Little tyke slash flatter with up. Interesting. Butter. Flatter with up could be butter. Oh, peanut butter. Oh. Maybe. So I think maybe the way these theme answers work is that the two clue, there are two clues um, separated by a slash, and each clue, each component of the clue represents a word that we fill, and then the slash comes at the point in the grid with this little icon, this little, little illustration. And perhaps we leave that blank or maybe we put a slash in there. I'm not sure. Let's look down. Okay, so the downs don't have that. It's just seemingly the acrosses that will have this theme mechanic. So what does this say? It was eliminated from the U.S. in 2004. I don't know. Is this a disease maybe? I'm not sure. And I don't know if it's three letters or four letters because I don't know if I mean, the downs don't have this theme thing, but the, it's possible that these illustrated cells could be off limits entirely. I don't know yet. National Dance Company. I don't know. And library IDs. That could be ISBNs, the oh, international standard book number, some, probably something like that. It's the barcode you see on books. Singer Grande informally. All right. I'm not enough of a boomer, I guess, to not have heard of Ariana Grande who must be Ari. I guess I didn't, I'm not 100% certain of that, but I, that must be the case. Okay. 
certain Scandinavian could be a Finn, someone from Finland. Although, I don't think that's correct. I don't think Finns are Scandinavians. They're Nords. Uh, Finland is Nordic, but not Scandinavian. So I think this might be a mistake in the crossword. I mean, I might be getting that wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I don't think this is correct. So is there something else it could be? Or is it wrong? Let's see. Remove as a ribbon is untie. It does look like Finn. I think that's wrong. I'm, I apologize if, if I'm, I'm the one who's completely incorrect. All right. Becoming faint could be trailing away, trailing off. Let's see if trailing works at all. Scalpel creations. Yeah, it could be slits. You could create a slit with a scalpel, a knife. MLK or RBG abbreviation. So this looks more complex than it is. I think it's simply in its initials. We see that MLK and RBG, and then we even, this is the most over, this is an incredibly overclued clue. We have an abbreviation indicator saying ABBR, which is itself abbreviated. And we have each of the names, MLK and RBG, each of those is abbreviated. So, and then on top of that, the answer is the thing itself, initials. So it's, just, it's almost a self-referential answer. Italian thoroughfare. Oh, Strada. Strada Street, the Autostrada, for instance. And some graffiti. I'm not sure. Let's look at this theme clue. Pep slash onesie feature. Pep. Could that be zinger or something, maybe? Oh, no, gin ginger. And a snap. A onesie feature is a snap. So I have to admit, I got ginger maybe because I was because it seemed like it would fit the theme. But, oh, these are cookies. Peanut butter cookie. Ginger snap. Oh, ginger snap cookie. Is that what these are? Are these the shapes that these might, into which the cookies might be cut, maybe? Anyway, um, I got ginger primarily because it seemed more thematically appropriate. And season to taste, right, of course. So it's the season to taste cookies. That's the That's the title of the puzzle. But I'm not sure I understand pep and ginger. Is that sort of that must that must connote? Um, I don't know energy or forthrightness or or a bit of maybe slight sass, perhaps just uh, gentle sass. I'm not sure. First and reverse. Those are gears in a car, and we have an and, so it's a a plural clue. High school subject could be English E N G, and we have. H, S, and subj, subject abbreviated, so the answer itself will also be abbreviated. If something is not learned, it's innate, uh, inborn, and a medical school subject could be anatomy. So we have two subjects in parallel, one above the other, English and anatomy. And what is this? Personal essence. So I still don't know if the illustrated cells are used in down answers. What about this? Loud but friendly growl. Loud but friendly growl. I'm not sure. And what about this one? Big name in cast iron cookware. Big name in cast iron cookware. I know this and I can't, I think I'm, actually, I don't think I have one of these, but I, but I, oh, I know it and I just can't bring it to mind. That's so frustrating. Here we have Ogler. So to ogle somebody is to leer at them or to eye them. So maybe it's an ire? <laughs> the crossword always gets a lot of mileage out of this thing where you sort of add an R to a verb to create a noun that is the thing that does the verbing. And sometimes, I mean, it's probably a real word, but yeah, it's hard to imagine using that in a sentence. Anyway, does that help this? Becoming faint. Ah, trailing away. Indeed. Okay. Big name in cast iron cookware. Boy, that A makes this even more familiar, and I still can't think. Is it Stahl, maybe? No. What is it? I know this brand name, and I can't think of it. That is infuriating. All right. Loud but friendly growl. Could it be a RAR? It's sort of... I mean, I, I recognize this as the kind of thing that you might see illustrated in a comic strip or something. A character saying RAR. But I don't know that I specifically understand it to have any connotation of friendliness necessarily, but maybe it does. Personal essence. True, the true me, perhaps? I'm wondering, I still don't know if I have six 
cells available are five. Maybe I won't put that in yet. Oh, Staub. Is it Staub? S-T-A-U-B. I think that's the brand. I don't know why that's so elusive. Went in a different direction. Could be broke something. Let's look at this and see if that K helps. Kind of leaf and scientist born on Christmas Day in 1642. Um, it's not Kepler, is it? Um, doesn't seem like a kind of cookie. Kind of leaf. Fig, oh, fig leaf. Fig, oh, Newton. That's much better. Fig Newton. There we go. That's interesting because that's a brand name as opposed to these others are generic types of cookies. Peanut butter cookie, ginger snaps. Um, fig, but Fig Newton is an, an actual commercial brand. So I still don't know about these doubts. <laughs> Went in a different direction. I guess true without two letters. I don't know what it would be. What about this? Set. And here we have mushroom. And here we have more than enough. More than enough. To. And here we have what's blank you. Don't know. Not a mystery. Could be known. If something is not a mystery, it is known. Adjust the spacing between as type letters kern. So kerning is um, in typography the space between each letter, and you can adjust that on a letter by letter basis to increase sometimes the way that letters are set by default. Particular combinations of uh, letters don't look as nice. There will seem to be too much space between them, for instance. All right, where to go on a trip? I'm, st I'm still sort of nervous about these um, downs that include these illustrated cells, so I'm going to keep skipping them for the time being. Come to blank. It could be come to terms. And then what is this? Reduce in volume and as new. So as new could be mint. Oh, and a thin mint, another cookie. So that's a Girl Scout cookie, and that's another... It probably is trademarked. It probably is actually a, a commercial brand name. So that's interesting. So we, we do have some commercial cookies in here. Anyway, what's blank you? What's into you? Is that... I don't know that I've heard it in that way. I've heard what's gotten into you, that sort of thing. What's into you? I wonder if that is the answer. Here we have up, old up, up, and away sloganeer. Now, I wouldn't have remembered this in particular, but TWA was an American... Um, airline that was acquired, well, it was an um, airline in the United States that was eventually acquired by American Airlines, the airline. Okay. And so I assume it must be, it must be then TWA Trans World Airlines is what it was called. Where to go on a trip. And here we have Kiwari speakers. So this will be an ethnic group. Um, Kiwari. Oh, this is another one that I really, I'm pretty sure I should know, and it's just eluding me at the moment. What about this? Proverbs spouting Panza, Sancho Panza from um, Don Quixote. And then here we have a bow, which could be an arc, curved line. Here we have certain another certain Scandinavian, a Dane. In this case, um, Danes are indeed Scandinavian, unlike Finns, I'm pretty sure. And some graffiti, oh, 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 I see. We fill in the, oh, okay. I didn't, I, I never, <laughs> I never stopped to, to think, consider this, but it looks like in these illustrated cells, we actually fill in the, um, what they represent. So in this case, tree, and then we can put street art into some graffiti. So what is this? Is it a bell? Oh, rubella must have been eliminated from the U.S. in 2004. Okay, so it was a disease. And then here we have gimme blank, start of a cheer at three Big Ten schools. Uh, well, that's frustrating. <laughs> gimme in, and then we need a letter. At least we know it is a letter whose <laughs> verbal pronunciation starts with a vowel sound because it has to follow an rather than a. But I don't know what it is. Okay, what about this? Lancaster to Scranton direction. So this would be in Pennsylvania, but I, I'm not sure. It'll be north. Oh, well, actually, I guess it has to be north by northeast. That's the only thing that'll fit. And here we have 
words before point or rate could be at any point or at any rate. So let's see, let's go back to some of these illustrated cells. I know sometimes it drives people crazy when I figure something very straightforward out about the theme and then don't take advantage of it. So let's do that. Let's take advantage of it. Uh, star, thin star. I guess I wonder if these, I wonder if these acrosses actually have any meaning or if thin star, star mint, thin mint star. I don't think so. I think they might just be for the downs. All right, where to go on a trip? Why do I not see what that is? The one I love band. Oh, R-E-M. And present opening could be om omnipresent. Um, present everywhere. And... Oh, I see. Sorry. Rest area. And then Jiwere speakers. Oh, no. So maybe I didn't know that. Okay. Sorry. What was this? Did I look at this? No. Ring slash hold. Hold as inhabitants, rather. So ring could be toll. And hold as inhabitants could be a house. You house people. You house and the as inhabitants means it only applies in the case of inhabitants. And well, I guess not only, but it does apply in the case of inhabitants. I'm going to house three people. I'm going to house three inhabitants. And then that creates Toll House cookies. And that also is a particular brand in the United States of what? Chocolate chips, I guess. Toll House chocolate chips. Okay. A citra. Oh, and then this is Angel. So let's type that in. And then we have what? Citrus hybrid. Oh, uh, Tangelo, I believe, is a citrus hybrid. So a cross of a tangerine and an orange. Is that the O? No. Tange... A lemon? Tangelo? I actually don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the, what the L-O is. But I'm pretty sure Tangelo is a citrus hybrid. Let's see. Blank Hall, the Wind in the Willows residence. Toad Hall the residence of Mr. Toad in The Wind in the Willows, the classic children's story. And then genuine, ah, so we can fill in heart, and then genuine becomes heartfelt. And then here we have sure, I'm game, could be let's, yeah, let's, I'm game, sure. And a green shampoo, I don't know, is, is Prell a green shampoo? Is it specifically green? I have no idea. Let's see. Noted Dadaist. Oh, is this Arp, the artist? And then here we, I think so. Let's check the crosses. Here we have dropped the ball. It's aired, made a mistake, made an error. And Outback Orders. So the Outback, the Australian Outback, the brush. Not sure. And then here we have stage name of rapper, Yasin Bey. Must be most deaf, the rapper. And here we have a wishy-washy response. Oh, I may, I may, I may not. And here we have get slangly. Could be to cop, to sort of to understand, to get. All right. So here we have relative of a tihi and a bit of marginalia. So a relative of a tihi could be a snicker, a little uh, sort of conspiratorial laugh. And bit of marginalia, snicker, a oh, doodle in the margins So marginalia, the little, uh, little writings in the margins of, of uh, paper. So we have snicker doodle, which I can't remember if I've had a snicker doodle. I, I know it's some kind of American classic cookie thing, but I can't, I can't really bring to mind what it actually is, <laughs> but, but it's clearly the answer. Okay. A downfall could be could be ruin. I was going to say a turn. He took a turn for the worse, but ruin is much more specific. And then that makes gimme an I, start of a cheer, three Big Ten schools. That's plausible. So let's check the R. Let's check the cross here. Certain urban map could be a bus route. There we go. And then what was this one? ABT, National Dance Company. Oh, maybe this is Alvin Ailey's. Maybe. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let's check all the crosses on bus route. Kitty. 
project or project could be project and then jut could jut out physically project out an outback order oh stakes so oh outback the restaurant okay fair enough and undercover attire um, outback steakhouse is a restaurant i presume solely or primarily in the united states a steakhouse and then undercover attire pjs <laughs> pajamas the attire you wear under the covers literally and kitty pot all right i think this isn't something i would have gotten right off the bat but i think this is a, a kitty the term for the anti pot the the betting pool in a game of in a in a, in a, in a betting game all right so this all looks correct i think abt i just have to hope that's correct and come to blank could be come to an end still a fair ways from this puzzle coming to an end cabinet department since 1965 and blank creole caribbean language um we'll have to see if with crosses what language that is and then demoralize undermine too many letters obviously what about this things bachelors might have and blank helmer ibsen heroin oh i'm not sure offhand is it nora what is this nightmare oh it could be a, a horror maybe it is nora got it interesting ending with a u oh must be y o must be the word u ending with it got it heard you or i'm not sure it could start with an i maybe uh what about these downs blank maria could be the ave maria and super mario brothers platform could be the nes the nintendo entertainment system so what is this one demoralize could be unnerve oh maybe maybe not horror nightmare but terror look at that extremely two extremely plausible answers uh with very very similar letters all right demoralize so that could be yeah unnerve somebody to demoralize them and what was this again cabinet department since 1965 um not sure what was this one again things bachelors might have bachelors might have I don't know what about this forest spirit oh a dryad perhaps looks right and a little a little lead I was thinking little lead initially but a little lead could be an edge maybe you're ahead by one point you have an edge a little lead and UNICEF address suffix oh <laughs> this is um org for dot org sorry the reason i laugh at that is because i forgot I, I don't think i've read any of these comments from yesterday's puzzle but in yesterday's puzzle there was an answer that was not so common extension and the answer was net as in dot net and quite a few people took some took issue um, both in the youtube comments as well as on the discord chat server people were extremely upset about that pointing out that dot net is not a file extension but rather a TLD, a top-level domain name, .com, .net, .org, that sort of thing. Um, although the clue didn't actually specify file extension, and you could, I think it's sort of fair enough to say that .net is an extension. Uh, I don't know. If you're a little loose with the te technical terminology, but some people were not willing to be loose with it, and I understand that. Uh, pedantry does sort of go hand-in-hand -hand with crossword solving, I have to admit. All right, got it. Um, oh, I read you. There we go. So this does look like Nora, indeed. And then what was this? Have we looked at this? I don't think so. Fit. Oh, in good shape. There we go. Oh, Haitian Creole, of course. Haitian Creole, Caribbean language. And, oh, Cabinet Department since 1965. Must be HUD. Housing and Urban Development, I believe. And bachelors, ah, bachelors might have degrees. A bachelor's degree. An undergraduate degree. There we go. All right. So what is, oh, no apartment policy, no blank, no pets. Seems like a plausible apartment policy. And here, gonna let it shine, singer. Is that Odette? It'll knock you out. Yeah, I bet it is. Ether will knock you out. Gas. And modern prefix with medicine. Um, I don't know, actually. What about this? Something else. And singer Gomez, Selena Gomez. There we go. <laughs> Another very obvious reference that is obvious to everybody, but but also obvious to me. 
Okay. Fix as a lawn could be resawed. And musician Brian, here we go. Here's a classic musician. So we've got a um, we've got a relatively younger musician crossing with the most hallowed musician in the halls of the New York Times crossword, Brian Eno. Okay. I don't know what this modern medicine prefix is. Is it is this somehow going to am I going to somehow be wrong after all of that and this is Serena rather than Selena or something like that? Fivers could be Abe's. Oh, maybe it's not Odetta. Odetta was I did I have that wrong? Let's see. Something else could be the best. So something else obviously could refer to a different thing, but it could also mean boy that is something else. That is just the best what <laughs> the best whatever this is. Something great. But let's look at this theme clue. We haven't looked at this yet. Possible result of getting one's wires crossed and moolah. Um, so moolah is money, right? What? Maybe fixes the lawn is re sow rather than re sod. And maybe this isn't the best. Um, pirate. Well, this probably isn't candy cane because that seems pretty long and wouldn't, I can't imagine putting the words candy cane inside of something that means pirate. So what is this? Is it just a cane? Not really sure. What about this? What is this thing here? Personal essence. I don't Oh, I see. It's an elf, I guess. Is it an elf? It, this must be an elf, an icon of an elf. Okay, I see. So personal essence is true self. Boy, that I don't know why I found that tricky. Maybe, maybe you all didn't at all. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that was unique to me, but I found that tough to puzzle out for some reason. All right, so if something becomes less taut, it sags. It's less, less taut. And if one went in a different direction, one, I see, branched out. There we go. And blank Finch, ER doctor, actually never saw ER. And if something will set, it will gel into shape. All right, mushroom. I keep thinking this means mushroom sort of meaning bloom or grow or in, in the sense of a mushroom cloud. Oh, swell, perhaps. There we go. That could be it. So Cleo Finch, maybe, ER doctor? Cleo, more than enough. Ah, uh, so I think this little gingerbread man is just a man, which makes more than enough being too many. And what about this? Breakfast dish slash fruitcake tidbit. Oatmeal raisin. So breakfast dish, oatmeal, and fruitcake tidbit could be a raisin in a fruit in a fruitcake. And an oatmeal raisin cookie is another cookie. All right, classic dog name, Fido is a classic dog name. Hip bones, I think Ilia, Ili, the Ilial bones or Iliac, Ilial probably. And Paris's blank Saint Louis, Il Saint Louis maybe, island. What some neighborhoods do, some neighborhoods gentrify. So we can put that in. And singer slash actress short must be Dinah Shore. And some ranges. Is it a mountain range or something else? I'm not sure. Nuclear medicine units. Uh, RADS is a, is a unit of measurement in uh, nuclear, I guess, technology generally, not just medicine, I suppose. Popular Adoption Agency, the ASPCA, the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. The prevention, not the protection of cruelty to animals, as I once erroneously said on the solve. Some laundromat machines are coin-ops, coin-operated machines. And a part of RSVP, so that's Respondez, s'il vous plaît, in French. So s'il, um, respond if one pleases, I guess. S'il vous plaît, Respondez, s'il vous plaît. No, if you please, sorry. All right. Physician awarded a Presidential Medal of Freedom by George W. Bush. Oh, it must be Dr. Fauci. That's funny. I didn't know that. Okay. 
and some ranges. Oh, I see, Amanas. So uh, in this case, a range, I think actually this came up on the crossword maybe yesterday, range being used to refer to a cooktop, a, a, a stove. Um, and uh, Amana is a, is a brand of kitchen appliance. So some ranges are made by Amanas. And actually, I guess you can interpret it as a range of kitchen appliances as well. There are two meanings of the word range, and they each fit this in, in a way. All right, a chandelier part often could be a crystal. So does that work here? Bobby of the NHL, Bobby Orr, sure, sounds right. And agency fighting epidemics, the CDC, ah, and that's a fun cross with Dr. Fauci. So, all right, we're really closing in here. L blank, view, oh wait, sorry, I meant to look here. Big block. Well, I don't know, so maybe let's look here again. L blank, view of Toledo painter, El Greco, must be the Greek. And blank Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. Must be yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus. I think that's from Miracle on 34th Street. And blank cradle, maritime rescue device. I'm not sure. What was this again? Big block. Oh, a log jam, I see. A big block meaning a big uh, obstruction. And blank cradle, maritime rescue device. Ja don't know. What about this? Long-tailed monkey, I'm not sure. Volts over amp. So a unit, presumably, that's equal to volts divided by amperage, I guess. So ohms, unit of resistance, I guess. <laughs> I'm no physicist. Uh, that's my guess. With 111 down, cholesterol reducer. Okay, and 111 down simply says C89 across. So cholesterol reducer, I'm not sure. What about this? Woman in progressive ads. I'm not sure. And here we have one keeping others up at night, perhaps. A snorer might do that. And a Christmas ornament often is an orb. Often you'll have a glass orb hung on your Christmas tree. Well, glass or something else pirate. And then what is this? Oh, right. The possible result of getting one's wires crossed. Oh, it could be a short, it could be short, uh, uh, an electrical short. So shortbread or, yeah, shortbread works. And then uh, mula is bread. Okay, great. So, oh yeah, why didn't I think of bread as a meaning for money? I don't know. Anyway, something else, but that does make this not the best. This modern prefix with medicine is very, is really confounding me. I don't know what it is. Um, this really looks like it must be the though. And this I think would be Odetta. I'm pretty confident about that, about the singer. So tele, telemedicine, I guess that must be seeing your doctor over Zoom or speaking to them on the phone? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, it's, it's, it's entirely plausible. I'm sure this is a real phrase. I just don't think I've seen it used very often myself, but that doesn't mean anything. I'm sure it is perfectly legitimate. All right, something else. The Oh, the bee's knees. There we go. So we're matching the idiomatic sense of the phrase. So something else that only has meaning in an idiomatic sense. And obviously, if you just say something else, literally, it doesn't have anything to do with quality. But we understand idiomatically that it means that's great, just like the bee's knees, which has no intrinsic meaning at all. Um, but we understand it to mean that that thing is great. And in fact, I was reading about the origin of the phrase the bee's knees a couple of months ago, and it derives from a, uh, a, a maybe in the, I think, 19th century, maybe, People just really liked these absurd, or no, maybe or maybe the early, early 20th century. It might have been the late 19th, early 20th century. And people just liked these ridiculous um, rhymes. They, they, they were just absurdities. And there were quite a few of them with these, these different uh, lud ludicrous little rhymes. And somehow the bee's knees was just the one that stuck around and became associated with something being great. But there used to be quite a few more. And I don't think they even necessarily meant the best thing. All right. Blowout party. Um, I don't know. I was going to say bash, but that's not enough letters. What about, oh, what about this? Two-time U.S. Open tennis champion while still a teen. 
Um, Celis, Mar- Monica Celis. I wouldn't have known that fact, but I re- that's a name I recognize and it fits in the crosses. That's why I think it might be her. Pride and prejudice, for instance, e.g., are traits, I guess. Are they? I suppose so. Mannheim, madame. Uh, so here's a, a pretty classic New York Times crossword convention. We'll use a place to indicate that we're looking for an answer in the language spoken in that place. So in Mannheim, they speak German. So a madam in German would be Frau, Mrs. whatever. And here we have pirate. Why do I not see what that is? And here we have cholesterol reducer. Is this sort of oleic acid or something? And then woman in progressive ads would be flow, which is a name. Oleic. Oh, oh, buccaneer. There we go. All right, I bet it is oleic acid or something, oleic something. So we have cane for candy cane, and then buccaneer is a pirate. And amasses with up could be racks up. Richard famous for large scale sculptures. I'm not sure offhand. Uh, high maintenance could be needy. Sign me up could be I'm in. Blank cradle, maritime rescue device. I'm still not sure about that. Jasper? I don't I have no idea. Piano performances, possibly. And blowout party. And trig function could be a sign. Trigonometry. I'm wondering if the fact that trigonometry is abbreviated to trig means we need a an abbreviated one of these, but sign is not abbreviated. That's the full word. Is there one that... Tangent, cosecant, cotangent, secant. None of those seem to fit the crosses with that N there. So I guess it probably is sign. Uh, Mea culpa, forgive me, or or what have you. And C89 across, right? So oleic acid was my guess. I don't actually know what that is, but it sounds right, doesn't it? And then football units, abbreviation, could be yards. And raises ups perhaps oops and then party staple onion dip looks right and kitschy kitschy coo and i guess that's spelled with a k-o-o or a c-o-o i'm not sure it looks more correct with a c but the k would match the other words let's look at this i know it must be k this puzzles images in two different ways um cookie oh cookie oh Oh, wow. All right. This is brilliant, actually. This this whole, this whole finally ties this whole thing together. And it I was thinking it was just two different clues with a um, two different uh, rules, I guess, for clues in terms of how they intersect with these uh, illustrated cells. And I don't know why this didn't occur to me earlier, but because um, I think at the beginning of the puzzle, I did think, oh, these look like cookie shapes. But then I think once I got into the puzzle and started looking at all of them, and there were things like elf, and I don't really recognize elf and a bell necessarily as being cookies, but I'm sure they absolutely are. Um, I'm just not, I, I haven't cut a lot of cookies in my lifetime. Um, but this is actually incredibly clever once we see the full revealer and what it means. We've got cookie cutters. These, these uh, icons are cutting the names of the cookies in two, and they are also the shape of cookie cutters, and they are labeled with the name of their shape. And that explains why this is man and this is cane. That This all makes much more sense now. I was thinking, why isn't this candy cane? And why isn't this gingerbread man? It's because the, the cutter is just the man and you cut that shape. The gingerbread is cut into that shape. And the cane, well, it's candy in the shape of a cane. And when it's made of candy, it's a candy cane. But this shape itself is just a cane. And this is just a tree, not intrinsically a Christmas tree. Um, all right, so that's all. This is all makes a lot of sense, and I'm very impressed. Okay. Anyway, piano performance possibly could be a recital. Oh, Jason's Cradle, I guess. I don't know what this is, but that looks right. And then blank mo, slow mo, slow motion, and an old fashioned menorah filler oil. That looks right. Uh, the um, Hanukkah, the um, candle, candelabra would, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway teetotalers opposite. So a teetotaler is someone who abstains from drinking alcohol and the opposite would be a sot, a drunk, and a hurdle for a JD wannabe. 
so that's a law degree. And so their hurdle might be the LSAT. The law school admissions test, I think we learned the other day. All right. It took me a moment to arrive at that. And Richard, famous for large-scale sculptures. I'm not sure. But prefix with space could be aerospace. So Richard Sarah, famous for large-scale sculptures, I hope. No, I got something wrong. Oh, no. Boo. All right. I will have to do my... I haven't had this in a little while, have I? But I'm going to run through the puzzle and try and figure out what it is I did wrong. All right. I might have to take a pause and figure out what's going on. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to investigate this. I'm sorry. I'll cut the video here so you don't need to watch this whole thing. Hello, I'm back. Sorry, I found my mistake. Uh, and I should have I should have noticed it, but I didn't. That's very frustrating. So what's into you? I thought that seemed sort of odd. And it turns out it was, and I should have paid more attention to that suspicion. And also I should have noticed that this, uh, what I put as own nose should be Otos. And if it were Otos, it would have actually been, would have been a group I've heard of, which um, seemed a lot more plausible. And so what's it to you? It's the answer. And there it is. Okay, good. I'm glad I have another typo somewhere. So um, I guess it wasn't a typo. It was just uh, an incorrect fill. So that's why I didn't initially spot it during my uh, once over of the grid. Anyway, I'm sorry if you saw that the whole time and were, were very frustrated in my lack of observation. But oh, look at that, 999 day streak. So tomorrow will be my 1000th streak day. And that's actually a day on which I will be heading to the airport uh, immediately after that crossword. So fortunately, it's a Monday and will not, <laughs> presumably will not take me very long unless I have another one of these moments. Okay, so there we go. This was, I thought, a very, a very nice theme. It's a shame that I, I marred it at the end with that, that little mistake, but um, I really enjoyed. So this was an interesting one in that I got the sort of fully understood the across bit of the theme from the first theme answer. Um, it was pretty straightforward, I think. Well, at least I, I got there. And But then it took quite a long time for me to really understand what was going on with the downs, which is funny because you'd think, if anything... That one would be pretty straightforward. You put the name of the thing in the cell, but I guess with a rebus. And I didn't. I should have. Exp- I should have explained more about the rebus when I got there. Um, well, you can obviously <laughs> self-explanatory now, but you can put several letters in a single cell of the grid, and that took me a lot longer to get. And then even after I got it, I didn't pick up on the thing that ties the across and down elements of the theme together, which is the cookie cutters. Uh, idea that each of these uh, shapes is both a the shape of a cookie cutter, literally, and also they are metaphorically cutting these cookies in the across answers into two parts. So very well done, a very clever and thoroughly executed theme by Laura Taylor Kinnell. So, all right, um, I'm going to I'm going to end this video because it's getting pretty long as the Sunday videos tend to do. And I had to spend all that time hunting for my mistake. So um, thank you so much for sticking with it this long. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you know someone who might like it, pass it on to them as well, either directly in person or uh, through your online social media or community of choice. And um Don't forget to check out the Patreon if you think you might be interested in all of those bonus solves, as well as additional access to the daily solve Discord chat server, the, um, and then depending on the level at which you back, the credit at the beginning of these videos, as well as that mug, the Let's Check the Crosses daily solve official mug is up there as well. And thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign. If you have, I appreciate it very much. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter at the daily solve. And that's it, I think, for today's Sunday, this long, uh, complex-themed puzzle. And I'll be back, as I say, tomorrow for my 1,000th streak, my 1,000th solved puzzle in an unbroken line, dating back horribly almost three years, I guess. (laughs) So uh, join me then for that Monday. It'll be a nice, gentle introduction to the solving week. I I I hope you'll join me. Until that point, though, please do have an excellent remainder of your Sunday. Take care.